it's a dangerous thing having a boat. <laughs> you go up to the local chandlers and you buy something. This is apparently is where they started the D-Day landings from. Unbelievable really. So we're going to go in to Todd Navigation in High Street Bangor and we're looking for maps, maps and more maps. You land lover. Charts, charts and more charts. It's more like it, you salty dog. Come on. So we're in Bangor, at rush hour, more or less. It's coming up to four o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, it's a nice enough little town. But near the marina we find this. We don't know quite what it is. It's like a little bandstand for a one-man band. You certainly couldn't get an orchestra under it. Probably, as long as you promise not to sing. With all these sail motifs that you see, you'd think there's a marina nearby somewhere. Oh look, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dangerous thing having a boat. <laughs> you go up to the local chandlers and you buy something. So I've got myself a snubber hook and I'm going to splice it. And the purchases continue on Salty Lass. We have a new buy fender. Because our current one is a wishbone fender which is, to be quite frank, useless. Because unless you know the exact height of the pontoon, you can never set it right. And since we're going to different marinas, we never know until we get there. A new pair of binoculars to replace my broken ones. Uh, these ones have a compass built in. Meanwhile, Gaynor is pleasuring herself with a anchor hook. And some nice nylon line to go with it, which she is going to splice. And I'm going to be making a... Oh, hang on. And I'm going to be making a uh, snubber hook. Okay, this is the latest addition. This little beauty here is a chain hook and it is for 8mm chain, which is what we've got. And Gainer has spliced it to this 5 or 7 metre length of nylon, whichever it was. And um, the idea with this is, rather than trying to tie a rolling hitch to act as the snubber, we can simply take the chain. Um, just um, stick it through like that. And you're done. It's on. Yep. And your chain is snubbed. Yep, and then I've just got to cleat this off. Mm -hmm. Just cleat the uh, rope off in the boat and we should be good to go. Our freeboard's about a metre and a half and we need about a metre to get to the fair lead, so that gives us two, uh, two and a half metres to play with on the snubber. <sighs> we um, just had a, a nice gentleman aboard and uh, one of the things that he was talking to us about was salt deposits in around the windlass and um, I could sell this to Tesco's Bev, Bev reckons that we can sell the amount of salt deposits down to Tesco's but uh, let's put it this way can we actually just video please? yeah go ahead um, yeah so he was advising us about the salt deposits and uh, Bev started to remove it now with uh, just a bit of screwdriver and uh, we're going to use some hot water in a second. You see that? Um, but yeah, we've just got some salt there. So, um, so basically, um, just here at the bottom of the windlass, um, salt collects okay, in, this little, um, in these little gaps. Just... Um, by the side of the chain there. Yeah. Um, we haven't got a gap on this side, but we've still got the... Um, you can see the salt collection. Just so we can see the salt collection. So, um, so all here we've got a salt collection. Um, so the gentleman was correct. We do need to, uh, every now and then, <laughs> clean in around the bottom of the windlass to keep the salt off. So this is our new solution. This is our bifender, which will fit just about any marina that we go to. It runs from roughly just above the waterline to halfway up the bow. And because it's on two bungee cords that are all pre-done to fit, it can be put on in about 
tenth the time the, bi the previous bifender went on in, and this one will work in any marina. So as you can see up here, it's just attached with simple bungee clips. That's the same on the other side. And because it's all pre-sized, as soon as you put it on, it fits the bike perfectly. One little purchase for our trip around Belfast was this from Sawyer's in the Fountain Centre, just behind City Hall, or just in front of City Hall, depending on which way around you stand. Um, it'll be interesting to see what it tastes like, so since we're out of coffee, this is going to be the next one into the coffee maker. out of the marina which is just around this corner you can either go up that street or that street. Supermarkets and uh, food shops are up there, the chippy is there and the uh, chart shop for Admiralty and Imray charts and specialist charts is up there. So we're gonna go in to Todd Navigation in High Street Bangor and we're looking for you landlubber. Charts, charts and more charts. It's more like it, you salty dog. Come on. This is today's purchase that we got from Todd Navigation and we have treated ourselves to the Northern Ireland cruising charts because we intend to do next year a lot of cruising along the Northern Ireland coast. This year we have to turn around, go back to Liverpool because we have things to do there in a few weeks time. And if anybody's after any clues about where we might be going next year, well, here's a hint where we might be starting from. <sighs> Bangor Marina uh, can take up to 500 yachts and um, is a 24 hour operation, which means that you can come in at any time. Um, which is really useful really because there's um, not all places are 24 hours but this is one of the ones that are 24 hours. We came in at night, we find that beacon easily enough but it was very very difficult to see the entrance because the entrance is very very close to the shoreline and you've then got to come in and come around this piece of old pier that's left over and then when you come around here you've got to make a sharp turn and go down that way toward the houses in the distance and then when you get down near that walkway that you can barely see and the boat you make a sharp turn to the left and go down that way towards your pontoons. It's hard to think that it's from actually from here that they um, started the Normandy landings. This is Belfast. This is miles away. But this is apparently is where they started the D-Day landings from. Unbelievable, really. And this is the uh, plaque that they've used to uh, commemorate it. One of the things I love about um, watching other YouTube channels is I saw a docking stick and I thought I want one of those. So <laughs> what I've done is um, I've got a bit of um, plastic tube and then I've added um, some little clips to it and then I've got my um, just a standard rope. This one's a 14mm standard rope that goes through and then I've just put this little marker just so that I know that I need to be doing my um, bowling in round there and then what I can do is I can just clip it to my um, uh, stick, my boat hook um, and then I'm ready to go and then what I've also done is I've put another marker just here 
and um, basically that's where it should go through the um, the fur lead, the middle fur lead and um, it should be suitable to go. So let's go see how this all works out. Okay, go. And then this gets... And the boat, moves, oops, and the boat moves forward into the slip. Which then brings the boat to a halt. Yep. Kind of glad we decided not to go today. Yeah, I mean, I know we're waterproof with all the gear and things, but even so. I think it's definitely time for the coffee pot to go on. And maybe even a square or two of good chocolate.